ونعم الحسيب أما بعد معشر المؤمنين with reliance upon Allah subhanah we will continue to break through the walls of ignorance and misunderstandings and offer our effort to Allah Jalla wa'ala in trying to consolidate at least a common understanding that will preclude us from what is otherwise a bleak and a doomed future. In the previous khutbahs, we took a closer look at the way our previous first generations of Muslims dealt with the issue of power. We try to follow as conscientiously as possible the information that we have available to us and we pursued that line of information mostly as it unraveled or as it developed until the first king of Islam took his position by force from a camp or a block of Muslims who were concerned first and foremost beginning with Abi Bakr and ending with Al Hassan they were concerned with the issue of justice they were concerned with a free Islamic conscience. They were concerned with the equality of the committed Muslims. And they were concerned with Islamic participation in the decision-making process. We followed this type of concern and how it eventually gave way to now another type of concern and that is to govern and not be burdened with the issue of justice or the issue of equality or the issue of participatory politics or the issue of a free Islamic conscience and mind. This is now a new set of people which we have to reconsider in light of what happened. Because all of this was to usher in events that had no equivalent that had no precedence. Events like Ibn Ziyad having the head of Al Imam Al Hussein presented to him on a platter. Whichever way a person may understand Islam, this is not something that can be explained from the Qur'an or from the Sunnah. We were to witness because of this 
unscrupulous obsession with power as, re- as represented by the first king in Islam. We were to have later on the horses of this new power structure commit a massacre in al Medina referred to in Islamic history as Yawm al harra The horses came into the Prophet's masjid and urinated between his grave and the minbar. We were to have, because of this new set of rulers, we were going to have a class now of Muslim scholars who were going to say that Al-Imam al Hussein was slaughtered in accordance with the Sharia of his grandfather. Things that don't make sense at all now were go- are going to become part of our history. We were going to begin to have a class of Muslim scholars who would argue in a scholarly way the prohibition Is it prohibited or is it not prohibited? During the days of Hajj, to bleed a mosquito or a fly or an insect, but they would not take a look at the shedding of the blood of the Muslims who stood for justice. They were more concerned with the blood of insects than they were concerned with the blood of the Mujahideen who were inside the Islamic context trying to stop a deviation now that portended ominous days for future generations. So with these events now in our history it should behoove us to take a closer look with our mind and our conscience our under, uh, our combined understanding of the Quran and the prophet to see where are the beginnings of all of this. And to do that, we are going to have to muster enough courage to take a hard look at the formative years of what later on became a monarchy, or in the words of Allah's Prophet in the Hadith, in which he refers to the sequence of Islamic governance, the Khilafah, and then Al-Mulk al adud the type of monarchy now that we are going to take consideration of. How and where are the roots and the beginnings, the genesis of this monarchy? With our best understanding of this early era of Islam, we can trace it back to the feelings of solidarity that predate the Prophet, the Quran, and Islam. There were, there is something that we can call nowadays, al 